as you may know, because you really can't hide from it, Adobe released Generative Fill AI in Photoshop version 25, which was also in the version 24 beta. Now, the premise behind this is that you can highlight something in your image, press a button, and it will replace it with something, whether you type something in or type nothing in, and then it will generate something from within the image. It sounds great, doesn't it? But let's see how it stacks up to two other artificial intelligence tools that we have in Photoshop and see which is best. Now, this image that you see in front of you is nothing that I would ever work on, but I needed to create something that would help me show you the differences between content aware fill, the remove tool and the generative fill and which one wins in each given category. This is really important stuff to know because you may go to reach for one tool and it doesn't do the job quite as well as another tool. So we're going to test it on noise really just a noise pattern. We're going to test it on basically the uh, pattern that you would get for transparency in Photoshop, and we're going to test it on some clouds. We're then going to run it through some other extensive testing and some practical application. So let's dive in. Now, what I'm going to do to keep things streamlined is I want this to just be a completely automatic process. So with the content aware fill, I am not going to be using the content aware fill dialog box that allows you to pick something from the image to replace it with. I'm going to use the automated version of content aware fill that's been around forever. So let me go ahead and zoom in here and we'll start with our content aware fill. So with content aware fill, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and just make some squares around these and get rid of these. Essentially what I want to do is I want to make these black circles disappear. I'm simulating a small object in your frame, a medium object in your frame and a large object in your frame. So what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this background layer actually first before we begin. So right click and duplicate. So we always have our control underneath. I'm going to go ahead and press shift F5, which will get me into the fill dialog. And in the fill dialog, I'm just going to press content aware and press OK. Now, what we see here is that it does a pretty good job with the small block because it's finding things around it and it's filling in that data. When we get to the big block, it took something very big from above and filled it in. So essentially what this version of artificial intelligence is doing is it's grabbing other areas in the image and it's filling them in. Let's go down with the remove tool and try this in the noise section. Okay, so I'll get a small brush and just click right here, a large brush and then an even larger brush and then just go ahead and press enter. I've got this set so that after I make those selections, I press the enter button instead of it happening after every one of them. So what we see is that it does a pretty good job creating a noise pattern here that fills in that area. We can still kind of see a haloing edge around the circle that we chose, but it's not that bad. Compared to generative fill, it does a lesser job, I would say, with smaller ones, but a much better job with bigger ones. Now let's move on down to generative fill. So to use generative fill, all we need to do is highlight these and I'm going to get all of them with my marquee tool and then just go right up here to the generative fill dialog, click in here as if I'm going to type something and just press generate. Now this takes an awful lot longer than it does for either the content aware fill or the remove tool. That's the first thing that you're going to notice, but we'll see if it does a decent job on filling in these areas. All right, come on, Adobe, let's do it. I'm going to speed this up for the rest of them, but you, you know, we all have to feel the pain of generating this stuff every once in a while. Okay. So looking at these patterns that we filled in, we can clearly see a distinct square around these where we don't see that distinct square up here with the content aware fill, maybe a little bit on the bigger one, but not so much. What we see here with the generative fill is that it's actually not very good at uh, mimicking a noise pattern. We do have options though, and we can sift through those options and still to, it's just not the best. I do have a fix for this and I'll make another video for that. That's a partner video to this video that I'll go ahead and put in the description below and at the end of this video, but stick around because we still have some more tests to run. Okay. So now here on this one, we're going to use content aware fill on these guys here. I'm just going to go ahead and press and hold shift with my marquee tool and see how content aware fills in these areas when we have lines to deal with, because not always are we dealing with, with patterns or noise patterns. We're also dealing with lines. So we'll press shift F five content aware fill doesn't do too bad of a job, especially on the small one where it doesn't have an intersection of a line, but anywhere there is an intersection or a 
difference difference between gray and white, you can clearly see that it gets a little bit confused. It's not the worst. It's not the best. It's it's good in a pinch. Let's see how our remove tool works on lines. Okay, so we'll just click here, make this a little bit bigger, click here, make this a little bit bigger and click here. Okay, and then we'll press enter. See how the remove tool does. It's got to think a little bit harder on this one, but dang, it did a phenomenal job on line work. The only thing I see here is that there's a little bit of pixelation on this edge that got darker than all the rest of them, but man, that, that could pass pretty well, I think. Okay, now let's come down here and see how well generative fill does on these areas. Press and hold shift, okay, and we'll move on through this, and then we'll just generative fill that in. See what it does for us. It did take a while, but man, does that produce some pretty decent results. Now there is no noise here, so we can't see any noise pattern re reproduced, but it did a phenomenal job with solid swatches and especially lines. I would say that in this case, Generative Fill definitely wins this one. Content Aware Fill wins this one, not with big areas though. Remove Tool does a pretty good job as well. So with this one is definitely between the Remove Tool and Generative Fill, but when we zoom out, it's really kind of hard to notice. Now let's go to something that's just more of a cloud pattern that really doesn't have any noise pattern to it at all either. So we'll go over here and we'll go ahead and make selection for this, selection for this, selection for this, Shift F5, Content Aware Fill, and dang, it did a pretty darn good job and it's fast, it's wicked fast. Now let's move on down here. Remove Tool, we'll use that big brush here, small brush here, smaller brush here. How you doing? It's gonna take a minute because it's gotta think a little bit, but see what it pulls out. Dang, that's pretty good, isn't it? All right, generative fill, let's see how you do here. Now, one thing to note here is that there really isn't a noise pattern here. It's really just a smooth cloud formation. As we start to really go in deep and go at the granular level, you're gonna see that this gets a little bit more interesting. Okay, so now we'll press generate. All right. It did a pretty good job. And you know, one of the things that we do have to mention about generative fill is that we also get several different options here. Okay, so it, it did pretty well. Now, there is no real noise pattern here. If we zoom in really close, there's no noise. So that one's pretty easy to deal with. Whereas here, we definitely have noise pattern. And what I want you to see with this, because this is where we get at the granular level, um, we're gonna do a, a zoomed in version. Uh, that Look at the noise here, it actually looks noise. This actually looks a little bit blurry. Now that's really important because when we get to the practical application and I show you the practical application, you're gonna see why generative fill isn't always the best. Okay, so now let's zoom in real close on these. This is at the granular level. What this would simulate is basically an image that you have that you've zoomed in on after you've done the content aware fill, remove tool or generative fill. Let's look at the noise pattern here and see what happens with content aware. This is so good at this level that I can barely even tell that there was something replaced in that image there. Now, if we look at the remove tool, it's pretty good too, but you see this almost like this like crosshatch type of pattern, almost like a plaid kind of feel to it. It's really kind of odd, but you can see right here that it just feels like it's, uh, it's it's almost trying to get too detailed. And this could be something that someone could notice. Now, maybe only if they're zoomed in really far, but the generative fill one, it tends to have this kind of blurry nature to it. You see that it's just, it, it's almost like it's taking the area that it's, that it's pulling in and it's blurring it. Well, it's not actually blurring it. What we need to know about generative fill is that this image, if we go to image size, is actually 5,000 pixels by 3,125 pixels. With generative fill, it cannot replicate the image size at this point. So the only thing that generative fill is actually doing is a 1024 by 1024 swatch at any given time. And if that swatch that you select is bigger than 1024, it's going to take that 1024 and interpolate it and make it even more blurry essentially because it's got to fill in that one little section. That's why a lot of people that use generative fill will do it section by section at a time because it tends to produce better results. Now let's go over and work this through practical applications. So I'm gonna use this content aware fill. I'm just gonna grab these guys right here and just simulate getting rid of these twigs, okay? And then I'll press Shift F5, content aware. Let's see what happens here. Okay, <laughs> this is the, the downfall of content aware is that sometimes it'll select from other areas of the image and try to make it fit. So let's just go ahead and grab this a little bit better, Shift F5, and see if we can 
get down. Okay, it does a pretty decent job. And then there we go. Now, what you will notice about this is that it creates repeated patterns from things that it finds from other places. If we look right here at this circle and this circle, it's essentially the same thing as this piece right here. So we know that this is being filled in by areas that are similar to this here. This is something that I would definitely clean up because the viewer would definitely notice that if they're a keen eye, maybe not that small at that granular level there, but they might. Now let's take the remove tool and see how the remove tool does on these twigs. I'm going to be a little bit more precise um, than a giant brush and then just press enter. All right, the remove tool does a decent job, but very similar to what we saw over here with the remove tool. You see this kind of weird pattern that happens. It's almost like it's really sharp and kind of has this what feels like a, a plaid shirt repeated several times at a very small level. Well, that kind of feels the same way down here. You see what I'm saying? Like it almost has that texture uh, of a plaid shirt, doesn't it? Uh, or a flannel shirt, I should say. Uh, but let's see what happens if we do it again. Okay. We still see that pattern. It's not the worst, but it's not really the best either. Let's move over here. Let's try generative fill on this guy right here. So I'm gonna go right around this guy. Okay. And then go up to generative fill. Okay, so not only did generative fill fill in this area pretty well actually, it also created some foliage from another, I don't know, fabrication from where? Um, doesn't look like foliage that is in this image, but, you know, that's the AI part of it. It creates things. <laughs> but it doesn't look bad, does it? It looks pretty good, actually, but let's turn this on and off and see what happens here. We do have some several different options here, too. If we don't want that piece of foliage, we could replace this with other pieces of foliage if we wanted to. Something like this might actually not be bad. But what I want you to see here, because this is where I, I get really picky about my editing process, especially when I use this on one of my images that's going to be a portfolio piece. This is really important. When we turn this on and off, I want you to really take a close look at the noise pattern here. This image has noise in it, and I want this to have the same noise pattern but it's not going to. And the reason why is because it's not going to replicate things at the same size as this image because of that 1024 restriction. Now this is at the current state. This is in November of 2023. So if you watch this in November of 2025, we're probably going to be at a, no, we, we are going to be at a different level with this AI stuff. So right now, this may not be an evergreen tutorial, but this is almost unacceptable for me because it doesn't have the same sharpness as the other twigs and these twigs do not have the same noise pattern as the other twigs. So when we zoom out, this might be something that could be recognized in a print if we're not careful. It really depends on the image though. If it's a small image size, it's not gonna matter. If it may be a 24 megapixel image, you probably won't even notice the difference. But if you're working on a 60 megapixel image at full, full resolution, you will notice a difference with generative fill. However, there is a way that you can make even this generative fill at this current state so much better. Now, I'm not going to show you that in this tutorial. I'm going to show you that in the next tutorial. I'm going to talk about how we can take this generative fill concept and make it almost as good as our content aware fill. Now, this test that I'm doing here between these three versions, as I said before, it's important to know how content aware works, what it's going to be doing, how the remove tool works, what it's going to be doing and how generative fill works and what your result is going to be. Putting these side by side is a real eye opener. I know that I can use content aware fill for speed and for the most part accuracy. It's going to need a little bit of help that I can either use the clone stamp tool with or maybe even the remove tool with. I do like the remove tool an awful lot, but with these higher resolution images that tend to have higher noise patterns, it tends to create this almost plaid shirt texture or flannel shirt texture that I'm just not a huge fan of that needs extra cleanup. Generative fill isn't bad, but it's not the best out of the other two in my personal opinion. And that's really comes down to the fact that it doesn't replicate noise patterns or detail, but I'm going to show you in this other video, this companion video to this, if you click on this video above here or in the description below, how you can make generative fill even better in almost any circumstance, even in this time period with the low resolution rendering. If you want to see that trick, click on the video above or in the description below.